Today we're going to be talking about communicating with your elected officials. Uh, we get a lot of mail here uh, at the headquarters and there are a bunch of us who travel uh, around to installations uh, around the country or to BOA functions around the country and we get all kinds of questions about how to communicate with your elected officials. What am I supposed to say? Those kinds of issues. Um, Pat, what kind of questions do you get most often when, you, when, when you're talking to folks about Congress? Well, Steve, I think there's a lot of confusion about whether they can contact their congressman. And uh, if they can contact their congressman, do they have to go through their chain of command first? Okay, that's a great example. You know, we hear, uh, all, if, you, if you spend 20 years on active duty, you're constantly hearing, don't contact your congressman about something going on. Give your commander the chance to work the problem. Uh, and that's true. You know, you, if you're on active duty, you don't want to contact your congressman every time there's something on the installation you don't like or there's something in your, your unit that you have a problem with. But it's completely different when you're talking about things that affect you and your family, whether it's pay, military pay, whether it's legislation, whether it's health care issues, whether it's retirement issues. Those are big time things that are well beyond the ability of your local command, chain of command to influence. So those are the kinds of things that we really do think people need to contact their legislators about. Otherwise, they and their family are going to suffer the consequences. Will the legislator uh, really take their concerns uh, to heart and really try to do what they can to help them? Well, we, we do hear that a lot, you know, that says, you know, gee, my legislator doesn't care. Sometimes I write them and I just get this bed bug response back. Um, but let me tell you, they count those letters. Um, and we have seen the impact um, when we go over to the Hill, when we go into hearings, we hear legislators talking about the amount of mail that they get. Uh, legislators don't read them all, but the staffers count them. The staffers brief the legislators on what they're getting mail on. Steve, what if I want to contact my legislator, but I don't know who he or she is, and I don't know their address? What would I do? Okay, very good question. We get that all the time from people who aren't used to writing their legislators, particularly military people who move around the country. Sometimes, you know, particularly family members actually change their addresses, and it can get confusing. Um, but we do have a solution you can go to the MOA website, which is www.moa.org, and up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a red toolbar that says Contact Congress. And if you click on that, that'll give you a drop-down menu. You can look up who your legislators are. You can look at what the current alerts are that we, you know, we have. We always have three or four alerts up there saying contact your legislator on this issue and we have a suggested message. All you have to do is type in your information. You type in your address and zip code. It automatically connects you with your particular legislators. And particularly if you're on active duty, put in your home voting address, not where you're living, and it will contact you, con connect you with the legislators you're voting for. So that's the, the simplest way, I think, to keep track, because legislators change all the time. One question that we get a lot from members concerns the MOA email alerts, uh, the form letters, the tear-out postcards that uh, they just have to sign and send in. Right. Uh, do those really carry a lot of weight with legislators? Um, are they um, as effective as a personal letter that, an, that a member might send? Well, that's a good question. And I always tell people nothing is as effective as a personal handwritten letter. But getting people to write personal handwritten letters is really tough. Uh, people are leery about, you know, as we talked about, they don't necessarily know who the legislator is. Um, even if they're worked up about an issue, people are a little, you know, uncertain of their ability to describe the issue correctly. Uh, and so we do the form letters, we do the alerts in order to give people something that they ha can have confidence you know, expresses the issue correctly. Now, in terms of whether they're as effective, uh, they're, they're not as effective as an individual letter, but volume counts. And I will take 40,000 form letters over 10 individual letters. And w we have had people uh, 
mail all those uh, tear out letters in the magazine uh, just before a hearing. And at one congressional hearing, they had actually stacked up 40,000 MOA tear out letters on the witness stand in front of the witnesses. And the chairman of the subcommittee said to the, to the DOD witnesses, if you think we're going to ignore these letters, you need to think again. So that's a, probably the best example I can think of where they do really uh, count. Uh, we talk to the people over on the staff sometimes when we do this annual tear out letter and we ask them how many they got. They said, we stopped counting. We've started weighing them, you know, so that makes a big deal. How can people know when there's something important happening in Congress that they need to write about? Okay, that, that's probably the single biggest issue that we have. You know, there's all kinds of people who get upset over this and upset over that. But there's nothing more effective than getting a big slug of mail right before an important vote on the Hill. And that's what we do with our MOA legislative alerts. And if I had to foot stomp anything, it would be you can't maximize your impact unless you know what's happening. And the way to find out what's happening is to subscribe to MOA's legislative update. You know, you may say, think, oh, if I read the magazine, I'm going to stay on top of things. But we have to write the magazine two months in advance. So by the time it gets to your mailbox, you know, the, the issue we were writing about is two months old. Sometimes we have votes come up in Congress where it's only a couple of days away. That's why email is so powerful and so important because we can send out an alert to our subscribers and we have about 140,000 subscribers right now and we've generated 30,000 emails to Congress in less than 24 hours. But we can't do that unless you're subscribed. So what you need to do is email Legis, that's L-E-G-I-S, at M-O-A-A dot O-R-G, and ask to sign up for MOA's legislative update. When you do that, we'll add you to our subscriber list. When there's a big issue going on the Hill, we can get in contact with you. We can give you a, a sample message to send to your legislators. All you have to do is click on the link, type in your information, and send it. As a matter of fact, if you do this regularly, if you've already filled in the information, it stays populated. So the next time, all you have to do is click the link and it's gone. Uh, a big, big issue and probably our single most powerful tool to get things done for you and your family. But we can't help you if you don't help yourself. So subscribe to the legislative update, keep informed, make sure your legislators understand that you care about the issues and you're writing them.